Canadian Fusilli. Fusilli, pasta twists. Yeah. But I, uh, instead of doing meatballs or a bolognese sauce, I used um, Canadian bacon. Oh, very nice. Basically, maple maple barbecue sauce uh, marinated pork chops. That sounds to put it nice. To put it on simple terms. And it was absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, that does sound rather nice. All right. Okay, hang on. I've just got two pugs beating each other up over my foot. Stop. 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 Stop! Stop! Oh. Right. Okay. Um, we we've uh, I've just put the thing up saying that we're we're live. Oh, we got some beer now already. Hiya. Oh, yeah. So um. I've got all three children in here having their dinner at the same time. Uh, well, like I say, we've, we've just had ours. So. I, I have the Taylorius Maylorius, so hopefully we'll be back with the rearview mirror this Sunday. Yes, no, because this Sunday I've got to drive you to bloody Wigan, haven't I? It's going to take about three, four hours there and back. Get a fish number. <laughs> For free, to be fair, the guy was selling it for 50 quid and I said, no way am I driving over to Wigan and then she told him that and the guy goes, we can have it for nothing we don't need the marketplace for God so she's going to put the fuel in and she's got to drive it over there um, and I, well, she found me a bargain because I've got you see the lights in the background the other side of Taylor's head Hang on. Yeah, there. that's two fish tanks one's mine and one's Taylor's and what she found me was a six, six foot tall hexagon plexiglass acrylic hexagon one. So what I'm right. going to do is in the corner where the standard lamp is, and then I can get rid of those tanks over there. Yeah. So anyway, um, how the very devil are you, Mr. Paul Rook? Thank you for joining us. No problem. Yeah, enjoy the madhouse. So I thought, why not? You know. <laughs> I see you've got a very appropriate T-shirt on. I have, yeah, getting really excited, ready for the Ghostbusters movie. It's only two years too late. Yeah. November. Uh, November, yeah. I see, um, what was it? Uh, the Suicide Squad came out today, didn't it? Uh, was it today? I don't know. I don't, I'm not too keen. I, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to like that one. DC <laughs> got a habit of making the same movies over and over again, didn't they? Yeah. Still seems to be like. And the latest episode of Grand Tour with Clarkson and that lot was... was I, I just watched that before joining you yeah. in. What did you think we did with the pontoon <laughs> going out to sea? Yeah, see? it was funny. Jesus, they're going to pick some yeah. bigger cars. And, uh, and after that, no one would lend them a boat. That's right. I wonder why. Yeah, I can imagine. Won't so, spoil that for anyone else. Yeah, exactly. So, for those of you who have just tuned in, um, as you know, my, myself and... Mr. Wayne there normally present the show every Friday. But we, we said we would get a guest in um, to join us. So today we have Mr. Paul Rook. I'm actually yeah. going in the right bloody direction this time. Yeah, absolutely. So, right. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Paul, Paul, well, Wayne and I have been friends here. But all three of us only got together for the first time a couple of weekends ago. The, uh, yeah, we did, yeah. At the investigation there. But uh, let's start the ball rolling. What has been your favourite moment in all your paranormal history? One thing that you look back on and you either laugh your bollocks off or you go, do you know what, that was pretty damn deep. Um, the first time I ever went out, just as a group of friends, after we decided we'd set a team up, um, we went to the Cold House Fall. Um, and because we wasn't high, we only had access to the outside of the place. Yeah. So they had like a zip line thing there. And um, one of our team members, Tara, she decided to have a go on the zip line. I think she made it to the bottom of the room before she plowed head first into the sand. So, <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. I remember. Was it Coal House Sport where Kerry Greenaway was with us? Mm -hmm. um, it could have been. I, I don't know. She's been on quite a few. She was. I hid behind a wall, uh, and she was walking mm -hmm. along. And I walked out. Yes, of it was. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> That's when he was with Kerry and Carter's team, wasn't it? That was yeah. Wayne, we are picking up a lot of background noise and I'm having difficulty hearing. Oh. Yes, unfortunately, Tamsin won't keep her mouth shut. Tamsin? No, I'm, I'm, I'm doing a show. You need to be quiet. <laughs> That's you. Do you know what? I think I can come back that. <laughs> there we go. Hang on. Quick run. <laughs> He'll be doing that all through the show, just wandering around so the kids can't follow him. <laughs> no, I'm, right. I'm doing it now. I'm going up the stairs now. I've got the child gate over so she can't come up the stairs. There you go. <laughs> what did you think of the uh, investigation we did um, at the, uh, the show on two weeks ago? Um, you mean the Parafest event? Yeah. 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 Um, I, I thought the place was quite quiet. We got a few <laughs> things, a few names um, associated with building, but I want to go back and investigate it for myself um, and see if we can tie them in. Um, but it's definitely a nice location and <sighs> definitely worth going to just for the experience. There's a place I do want to investigate and I can't. You came with us. It was about five, six years ago. Before. You came with us, and it was a big house on its own. Was it Rygate or somewhere like that? And it, and it was it was very difficult to get hold of this place. And we did it, and it had stairs going downstairs. Stairs going downstairs. Yeah. Had a um, uh, spiral staircase going down into the cellars, and we couldn't yeah, get that... into the cellars because it was flooded. Do you remember? Yeah, that was Rygate House. Yeah. I get a I wouldn't mind doing that again. Yeah. Um, I don't know if they allow investigations in there, to be fair. Uh, bit, of a, bit of a backstory. Nothing to do with me, but, um, yeah, the uh, caretakers were doing deals on the slide. Um, oh, right. I told them to um, put it somewhere the sun didn't shine, basically. Oh, fair yeah. enough. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was literally just um, a gatehouse. Um, That's right. And yeah, yeah, it did have, because it was, the stairwell went from the basement all the way up to the roof, but right. it wasn't covered over. So when it rained, all the rain went straight to the basement. That's why it was flooded. Ah, I didn't realise that. Yeah. 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 Oh, it, it was only a little little location, probably right, by yeah. Yeah. five people the in there. The grounds were quite busy, weren't they? Yeah. So, um, Wayne, have you got any questions you want to ask Paul? Because I mean, I've got I've got loads in there, but I'm trying to keep it fairly clean at the moment. So, have you got any, any questions you want to ask Paul? Not really, because most of the questions I ever ask Paul have always already been asked. <laughs> <laughs> but they haven't been asked on here. Well, oh, all right, right, okay then. Well, on here, Paul. Yeah. When when will be your the next time you go out on an investigation? The next one is 14th of August to Kelvin Hatch. Mark's always joining us on that one. Yep. Um, and it is literally a small team going. Um, no members of the public. We just hired it and investigated it. So Kelvin and Hatch nuclear bunker. Kelvin Hatch is the one where we had that video with that yeah. freaky thing peering out beside the hospital screen. That's it. Yeah, that's um, the, one. the last time I was at Kelvin Hatch, I was with Fred Bat. But that not was literally, good. not literally with Fred Bat, but it was it was doing a public event, and Fred Bat was there with us. So it, um, that's going back a few years. So you went a bit batty with Fred Bat, did you? <laughs> <laughs> but it was, that was quite good. I mean, I've I've was it three times now I've investigated there. And I always love the corridor. Yeah. I always start at the bottom of the corridor that goes to the cottage. And I work my way oh, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it was a few years back. Um, the first time I investigated there, it was me and two others had gone down into that corridor that led to the, 
the cottage and they block the end off, don't they? So you can't go too far to, to the cottage. Um, yeah. So we, we'd gone up as far as we could go. And as we were walking back, we could see what appeared to be two red lights at the bottom of the corridor, which yeah. was right at the bottom of the hatch. You had two red lights, did you? Mm. And we thought that it was the control panels because obviously they've got the control mm. systems down there, haven't they? Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. we asked someone to come down and turn the lights on and they came and turned the lights on and there was no control panel on that particular section where we saw these red lights. Mm -hmm. So that person turned the lights off and joined us halfway down the tunnel. And as we walked closer, the guy that was with us um, that was Alan Cooper. I think you, yeah. you know him. I like Alan. I know, yeah. I know Alan. Yeah. And he had his big old camera with this massive flash on it. Yeah. This, his, his light on. And he turned it on. And as, as he turned the light on, you could see this white object coming straight towards us. Hit one of our colleagues and, and disappeared. And we're like, okay. So we started looking around to try and find what this object was. And it turned out to be a small stone, in, and it was sitting in the gutter alongside the corridor. But what it had done was it clipped his ear, and it had actually cut his ear open. Well, Alan. And not Alan. It was Kevin that was with oh, us. Yeah. Um, it had actually hit his ear and, um, you know, cut his ear open. So he was quite alarmed by that. Mm. And every time I go back down there, there's, there's a funny feeling that something's, something's watching us. Every time. Yeah, we, we get that down in the um, the medical bay, you know, where the bunk room is. And it's in there, those, those two areas, that there is something watching. And I've just sent over in a private chat a link to the um, anomaly that we actually caught. So I don't know if um, Mark can put it into the other chat room so everyone can have a look. Yeah. You two carry on talking. I will have a quick look. Yeah, you can see. Okay, I'll put it in the private chat. So yeah, just chuck it in the other <laughs> one. Um, so yeah, we, we've always got something going off in there, and down in the tunnel at the bottom, the one that goes to the little cottage in the woods, um, we've had a few people seeing shadow, shadow masses in there, and one particular investigator said that they actually had it rushed towards them. Right. Um, yeah. And it was an investigator that doesn't run that much, um, and I've never seen him move so fast. <laughs> <laughs> See, if that had been me, I'd have run towards it. Yeah. Not I, run away. Yeah, so no, I, I would have been, wow, look at that sort of thing, not, not run yeah. at all. And, um, but I've always wondered, that there's always these investigators that go, oh, yeah, you know, shadow people, I'll, I'll, I'll chase them. But I've always wondered what they what would happen if they actually caught them. Yeah. What would they do? I don't I don't think anybody would actually get a chance to actually catch one. I think, you know, it will they they know full well what's going on. And it, and if you gave chase to one, it would probably lead you around a corner and just vanish when you when you can't see it. Yeah. But what if he just turned around and stopped and let you catch up with him? What would you do then? Yeah, <laughs> whatever that sound was in the background. <laughs> Some dickhead outside. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, what? Yeah, like you say, what? What would you do if it if it stopped? I, I yeah. think unless it happens to you, you'd never know. No, that's it. I, I always envisage the um, the episode of Running Falls and Horses where the coppers chasing Dell with the dogs in the suitcase. And he goes around the corner chasing Dell, and then all of a sudden you see him coming back with the dogs behind him. <laughs> 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 that, that sort of thing, that, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'd probably, I'd probably just stand there and laugh. I mean, I, when I had my experience at um, Harrods Redoubt Fort with the mannequin dummy being thrown at me, mm. I, I just grabbed hold of it, the head fell off, and I just started laughing. That was my response. <laughs> Because I was trying to, I was trying to stop the head from rolling out into the corridor with me feet. Oh, yeah, so I was playing fun. football with this head. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you I know, know it, funny. I it, it is the fight or flight response. Okay, yeah, Mark, you you just put the link in the you in the chat, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, for that for that YouTube video where uh, that thing yeah. was peering out. Yeah. By the hospital screen, and the thing was with that when we did the investigation, none of us saw it. Although two, I'm sure two of the girls there were picking up with something nasty in that area, but mm. we we didn't see or hear it. And it was only when the videos were being reviewed, wasn't it? And so it we were, was, yeah. What the bloody hell is that? And yeah, then, uh, and if if you see on the clip as well, your the camera will pan past the um, medical curtain, and then as it comes back, there's something staring out through the gap. That's right. Um, it does. It, it looks like a face, but it isn't quite human or, or it's distorted. It's a really weird um, capture, and it was actually quite captured on an old video recorder, you know, with the cassettes. So it wasn't a digital camera or anything like that. Yeah. That's right. That was interesting. It, that, it was. And we went back a couple of nights later to have a look at the, the area it happened. There was only about a foot gap between the, um, the medical blinds and the filing cabinet that was behind. So it was That's quite... Right. Unless we had a small child in there, there's no way... That anything was beyond there. Yeah. Well, the last time I looked, we didn't generally, as a rule, brought kids with us on investigations. Unless you no. want to uh, clean the chimneys. You know, but that was about it. <laughs> yeah. Paul uh, has asked, where is the link? If you look, it's two messages above yourself, Paul, in the chat room, in, in the chat there, you'll see the link. Click on it, or copy it, and paste it. And Gary Bradley, it Gary. <laughs> So, um... Come on then. Out of all the, the pit, your no. Out of all your fellow investigators and people you've interviewed, which one's got the biggest? Um, which has been the most fun for you to uh, interview and chat to, uh, or, or off screen or whatever? Um, oh God, there's so many that I've enjoy, really enjoyed talking to. Um, a guy that I spoke to because I, I've got um, a, like a religious background. Yeah, and you? I, I'm caught. Yeah, no, seriously. Only water boils when you yeah. go near it. No, it doesn't. <laughs> it runs away. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I've, I've got a big thing about um, the Bible and some of the stories in it uh, that could be related to the paranormal. Um, we found a guy called Matt Arnold, and he has studied the Bible and paranormal experiences in the Bible, yeah. um, and he just he's got so much information um even like some of the origins of the demons and things like that from a biblical yeah reference and he just blows my mind he's so fascinating to talk to i think that's what it's like with me like, like you know jamie jamie krashner over in the states no we uh, kerry kerry and i used to have her on on the show sometimes um absolute minefield of religious information and don't yeah. get she's not, she's not a uh she's not a bible bait or religious nut or anything like that she just knows a lot about lots of different types of religions and yeah and she's a an absolute minefield uh, of information to have on there well that's uh, like matt arnold he, he's like a psychologist you know he studied different quotes in the bible and you know he, he's got so much research um it's, it's amazing. I could talk to him all day. i tell you one thing I have noticed. I don't know if you've had it, Wayne. Since I put out the thing saying, oh, we, we, we might start having guests on the show, I have had so many people send me messages about what they can do, what they can't do, what alien they talk to, which planet this alien comes from. <laughs> and I'm like, I'll get back to you, mate. Um... I haven't had any messages regards to that sort of thing. Oh, I've I've had some interesting ones, and I I do just have well, to say, you. we'll get back to you. We'll get back to you. <laughs> so, nice and polite about it. I'm I'm not like I haven't got a tinfoil hat for you to wear or anything like that. It's just I'm nice and polite. But um, oh, something I wanted to, before we carry on. Something I wanted to bend your ear about, Paul. Um, that yeah. you put on that thing about <laughs> uh, quantum physics. It looks like it's proving that death isn't real and it's a it's a hallucination. Yeah, you're going basically. I think it's going from one realm to another. Yeah. So you're, so you're leaving this realm behind and moving on to the next. 
when we've spoken about you know yourself when we've spoken about it on previous shows and wayne mm. when we, isn't it when we've spoken about it we've always said well yeah. i've always said when you die that's not it i'm convinced that's not it because we wouldn't be if it was we wouldn't be proud of all investigators you know mm. um and i think that although your body goes that is definitely not it and whatever it is you go i don't believe in the universal consciousness because I think that when you go, there's like a blueprint made of your thoughts and feelings and experiences. But I think that mm. if you join the universal consciousness, you lose who you are and what you've done in the individuality. And I don't think that makes any sense. No, I, I think of it, especially like in layman's terms, if like a computer game, we're on level one. When you've learned everything you need to in this level, you go up a level. If there's something that you need to go back and relearn, or haven't learned yet, but because you've cheated to get to the next level, you're booted back. <laughs> you've got to do it all over again. <laughs> so yeah, and that's where thing. that's where the Buddhist reincarnation comes into play. Yeah, absolutely. What, what are your two thoughts on that? Yeah, well, I mean, I I I think it's about right because the other day I posted something on Facebook on my Facebook timeline about the human body and we've all said you know the different theories behind spirits being energy and things like that yeah and i i think it works out that each human cell is capable of generating 0.75 volts of electricity i know what you're gonna say yeah when you times it by the amount of cells in the human body that equated to something like 72 trillion volts of electricity that the, the human body the as a whole can generate yeah which is a lot more than a bolt of lightning. Um, so that energy has got to go somewhere when the physical dies. Busy? Yeah, that it must be. It, it? Yeah. <laughs> Bloody <So> bollocks. <laughs> I, can, I, can, I can see the point there where, you know, like, like Paul says, when you've, when you've learned everything you can on this level, your your end your spirit energy moves on to the next level and starts again. I but it's learning new things and a, a new way of being. Yeah, I I mm, I see. I think that when you go or when you cross over, the options there to carry on or to go to something different. Um, it's my own, my own belief, you know. Um, why are you get that bone out of my head, you daft bugger? <laughs> <laughs> he's wandering about with a big bone in his mouth. Go, oh, no, 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 no. <clears throat> um, he's coming back now. Look, look there you go. Um, but I, not, I do think that you get the option. That's right. You hit me in the head, but thank you so much, young man. Um, I think you get the option to either carry on if you want or go to something else. But because we're all linked, especially with uh, quantum string theory and everything like that. Thank you. Um, do you think that if you've got an option to go on to do something else, do you think it's as we are as human beings, or do you think it's on possibly another round another planet? And that might explain a lot of aliens. Ha ha! See what I did there. Ha ha ha! I can see that possibility. Oh, yeah. Love you too. Yeah. Why not? Okay, no, no, I love you. And this is this is why everything like that is all based on theories. Yeah. Because until those until those theories are proven fact, that's all they're ever going to be. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? How many times have we said on the show? Uh, you can be very knowledgeable in the field, but nobody can turn around saying that they're an expert in the paranormal because no one knows what the hell the paranormal is. There's no experts no. in it. There's, there's no fact to the majority of it. The only times there are things that, that fact is involved is when people start screaming orbs, look at this, and you see, mm. you see the, bug, the bug's wing beats as it goes across the screen, and you're like, yeah. yes, that's Skyfish. Google it. You'll soon see. And I saw it on a post today. Someone was adamant that they had caught something paranormal on their camera, and everybody straight underneath one. I'm, I was tempted. I was going to put a comment on there and say, Google Skyfish and you'll get exact same photo. And yeah. they, you know, everybody else had beaten me to it. And they were trying to stick up for their own picture. And everybody was going, no, it's a Skyfish. Just look at it. 
And then yeah. someone went on about the shutter speed being slower. And I went, no, it's the other way around. With a digital camera, it's faster. And that's why it picks up the individual wing beats. Yeah, that's right. And they just wouldn't have it. They were still adamant. And I just thought, you know what? I'm not going to get involved with this. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it's best to avoid those aliens. conversations. Yeah. Have you seen that there is going to be another, um, not disclosure, but another report? Can you pass me another one? Another report is going to be brought up <coughs> from the US government in regards to uh, uh, UAPs? Yeah. Thank you very much. You may go. I'm going to go with <laughs> <laughs> you. Go because you want to, not because I can. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, I think we've spoken about it at length again before. Um, there was, in fact, uh, Andy, who's in the chat room now, he sent me a very interesting uh, um, news report that he found that about light has finally been seen from the other side of, of a black hole. What yes, do you and you, what do you think there is on the other side of black hole? Do you think it's a shortcut or a doorway? Well, if something's gone, if, if light goes into it, then it's at go some somewhere. point it's going to come out of it, isn't it? So it's it's a doorway or a portal of some point, some kind, isn't it? I I think it's. I don't think it's a doorway to another dimension. Andy's just said another world. I do, however, think it may possibly be like a shortcake to shortcake, shortcut to either some other galaxy or somewhere very far, far away. <coughs> mm, I, anyway. No, I don't think so because light has come into it from this side, and you've just That's seen it come out the other side. Yeah, so where has it gone between the two? It's, it's a hole. cosmic plug hole. Yeah. Basically. Yeah, and it condenses so, everything down into if, the stream of yeah, light. Yeah, if, if they can prove that there is an exit to a black hole, then that is all it is, is a cosmic plug hole. But things are getting going? sucked into the black hole. Anything that goes in there has got to come out somewhere. Regardless of the fact that gravity is there and pulverizing everything that goes into the black hole, there has still got to be some sort of material left over. Do you reckon it's like the Ivan? And it's got to go somewhere. You got, got a sweet spot where you could actually go in theory in and out. No, I reckon if you're in an aeroplane and you get a hole inside of the aeroplane, everything gets sucked into it and then it comes out the other side. So yep. you're probably possibly looking at a a hole in space into you black it matter. Could be used as a shortcut? Mm, no. If if you're looking at if you're imagining a black hole, well, the other side of a black hole to be empty um, interstellar okay. space, as it were. So black holes on one side, sucking everything into it, and then on the other side of this bubble, there's an, an exit hole. Yeah. So it's just going in one and coming out the other. So it could just be a pocket of pocket of interstellar space. Why not? Do you reckon it works both ways or just one way? <clears throat> no, I, well, no. it's difficult to tell, isn't it? No, I don't, going I don't from, think it does. Going from think... what they were saying, no, I think it is one way because obviously everything has been sucked in one side and being chucked out the other. If it works both ways, then everything... Hmm. If it works both ways, then surely you'd be having stuff sucked in from the other side as well. So you wouldn't have seen that stream of light come out the other end. This is yeah, because again, again, with a black hole, gravity plays the most important role. Mm. Mm. Once you're caught in a black hole, you're not getting out. So for something to come back out the other way, they have got to have some weird technology that, that stops the the gravity of the black hole from sucking them back in again if they were to try mm. and come through that way and if you look at space as as um something like water you've got a bubble of something else inside that water so it's sucking yeah. sucking stuff from our space 
into whatever bubble it is and chucking it out the other end. Or, I mean, do you reckon, I mean, the thing that annoyed me is I, I've read uh, quite a few reports this week on, on aliens and UFOs and uh, intelligent life on other planets, etc., etc., etc. And there was an interesting case made as to why um, places like NASA and this, that, and that are being, have been dumbing down everybody so that we don't question about aliens. Um, I won't go into it. I'll put it on the, um, on the wall at some point. But certain people in that field, in the space field, are now starting to go, oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on a minute. And then it was brought to light that what we've always said, you know, about for every pinprick of light you see, there's one or two planets capable of sustaining life on each, you know, for each pinprick. And this um, report was basically saying exactly what we've said. Yeah. But... And for every single thing that happens, like us here having this radio show now, somewhere out in the armpit of God knows what else in whatever galaxy, there's three aliens there chuckling their heads off and going, the hold it, in the hold it. Same show as we're doing right now, but in whatever they are. Do you reckon uh, so, something like that? I, I just want to address something that Andy said in the chat room, actually. So, like, how big is space? I, I personally think it's infinite. And you've got plenty of dark matter. Yeah. And then in the, in the dark matter, you've got galaxies, which is like the, the Milky Way. Uh, that, that's our system, isn't it? We're, we're part of the Milky Way system. Uh, but beyond that, you've got interstellar space right. and the space in between, which is black, nothing. And you'll, you, you see pictures of it, you know? Um, so who's to say there isn't bubbles of black interstellar space mixed in with these Milky Way systems. I get you. I get you. Mm. Yeah, I mean, and, and like, like we're saying with the black holes, they can use that as a one-way system, but there would have to be more than one black hole about. You would have to have the black hole for the exit point to go out and then the white hole to come back. The white hole even, not the white hole. That's in London. <laughs> um <laughs> So you just open the doors be, and it'd be like a dual carriageway. You'd have one for going out and one for coming back. But if you look at one from a distance, you would just see the black hole, stuff going in and stuff coming out. So to use that as a highway across space would be pointless. Yeah. Because you'd only see it going in one side and then a few millimetres away it comes out the other side. So that's a pointless exercise of using what worm uh, using those for space travel. Where exactly. wormholes are completely different. Because again, yeah. if you think of space like um, like the audio waves that go up and down, yeah. like that, you know, and it just cuts through the middle. So rather than going all the way around, you're cutting through. Yeah. That's what I was on about with the black holes. If you fold, because they reckon it folds somehow, space and intersects straight through it, like you just said, with, yeah. with the pitches and troughs, and it goes straight through the middle of it all. Yeah, they're wormholes. Yeah, do you... black holes different. I, I think capture it so using a black hole. We could possibly harness the power to use as propulsion. Yeah, it's it's the slingshot effect, isn't it? It's it's what yeah. we use to get to the moon. We wrote we orbit round Earth to gain the momentum we need to be able to push a vehicle to the moon without the use of um, the fuel that we would normally use. And then they do the same. Once they've done what they need to do on the moon, they use the slingshot method to bring it back. And that's what they, they were thinking of using um, to send the next vehicle to Mars. So you'd launch it from here, um, from Earth, use the lunar gravity to help slingshot around to Mars. But it's all a case of timing. You've got to yeah. have it all be launched at the correct time and then you've got to have it orbit the moon so many times until it's in line with the closest distance towards Mars before you can slingshot it off towards Mars again. And that's yeah. the only, the, the cheapest alternative to actually wasting fuel. Yeah. But now, obviously, they're talking about all this business with actually having a base on the moon, which, well, obviously, as we've discussed before, there's yeah. already a base there. Um <laughs> It's again, it's going to be even cheaper to launch a, a ship from the moon to Mars because the gravity isn't as strong. Yeah, 
you've also got clouds and clouds of all the different uh, elements that make up the rocket fuel up there as well. There's a, a cloud of alcohol in our system that, as far as I remember rightly, it could give everybody on this earth 20,000 pints of beer a day for in, in, infinity. I think it's like infinity or something like that. And it's like, well, there you go. Yes, that's why some of it. That's why some of us don't need to drink to make fools of themselves. Yeah. <laughs> so, out of what's what's out of all the topics that you, you know on your show, the Paranormal Concept Show, you talk about lots of different things like like we do on here. But yeah. out of um, all the topics out there, because the paranormal, as you know yourself. Is, isn't just ghosts and goodies and stuff like that. It's yeah. every single different thing that's out there. What's your your forte, your favourite thing? Um, because he winds Kerry up, I like time travel. <laughs> so go on, then, tell us more about time travel and what it does to uh, Kerry Greenway. Well, it, it just winds her up because it's just a subject, subject that she doesn't like. So I always try and bring in time travel references, especially with like Doctor Who and Star Trek and things like that. Is that and like me and Daniel? Yeah, exactly. Um, but no, I, I find time travel quite interesting. And I know for a fact that um, aeroplanes and the ISS space station all have clocks go faster than they do oh, yeah. on, on the planet. So the further you are, the faster you travel. So it all, all ties in and you, you technically do travel it forward in time. But as for traveling back, it's, I, I, don't, I don't know if it's theoretically impossible, but I can't see how that's going to work. Well, apparently mathematically, it, time travel backwards and forwards is possible. Mm. So on paper it is. They've just got to produce the thing that can do it. Yeah, but again, traveling back in time is going to be a pointless exercise anyway. I don't know. You could stop yourself when you're young and say, "No, don't go. No, don't go near her. No, no." Yeah, um, but then you've changed your path of destiny. So when you get to in the timeline, if you don't experience the same things, you're not going to be going back in time to change it. So you've just reverted the timeline back to the, the way it would have been. Would you like it if you could go back in time, literally as a an observer? You could just go to certain events, observe, and then come back. Um, it, it'd be interesting, definitely, to observe. Um, but just the mere fact that you're there, you can, I suppose, yeah. Um, there is, I mean, there is, there is a problem with being able to go back into time, is if the technology was readily available, that would cause such a myriad of events that could cause problems with the future now. Well, yes. to be fair, I think Paul sort of. was the babushka woman. <laughs> the thing is, the thing is, all it takes is for one person to obtain the technology, and they could go back and stop Kaiser Wilhelm from starting the First World War or from the assassination. Yeah, but then if, if they, um, this is the argument I would carry because if someone went back to an assassinate Hitler, for example, yeah, Hitler wouldn't become the person that we all um, know of for what what he did. So therefore, in that timeline, you'll get to the point where you should be travelling back to kill Hitler, but because you haven't got a reason to, you don't. So then you don't really go back in time to kill Hitler, <coughs> and Hitler survives and still does the atrocities that he, he was known for. So you've just you, what you've done is travel back in time and done nothing. Done nothing. Yeah. But the problem yeah. is, is, is if you were able to go back. And you were able to get somehow get into Berlin. I think I'd be all right with blonde hair, blue eyes. Um, <laughs> if you're able to get to Berlin with a sniper rifle and take Adolf Hitler out, I'd erase myself because yeah. half the most of the things that would have happened in the war would have stopped the future from happening. Yeah, because the generations that didn't go to war or die in battle will still carry on. So you would end up with this overpopulation of the world well, earlier. Because, again, because you've erased yourself, you're no longer in the future to come back to kill Hitler. Exactly. You so, cancel yourself out. Exactly. So you cancel everything out, so it just reverts yep. back to the way it was anyway. You I mean, can't my change nan, history. 
No, my nan and granddad, my, my nan was in the RAF, my granddad was in the Navy, and the war brought them together. Yeah. Um, so if it wasn't for the Second World War, I wouldn't be here. Yeah. Because my nan and granddad would never have met. Exactly. So, so for you. <laughs> um, yeah, so that, that's why Kerry don't like it, because we just go around in circles. Andy's talked about the Philadelphia experiment. The Philadelphia experiment wasn't an experiment in time travel. It was a, a, an experiment in... Teleportation. Uh, well, no, it was originally an experiment in um, camouflage. Yes, but sorry. Teleportation yeah. where it buggered off up, <coughs> um, up the road, so to speak, for a, a few, a, quite a few miles and ended up in another harbour. That was all due to the effects of, yeah, they were using um, a Tesla's um, good old Tesla again scientific yeah. results to produce this effect, but it um, unfortunately it went wrong. It wasn't a time travel uh, experiment. No, it? It, it was supposed to be for stealth technology, wasn't it? Yeah. An, a, the original stealth technology, and it went a bit awry. And I, I, I sent you that link the other day, didn't I? Of, of photographs. That were taken of some of the sailors that were on the boat, on the ship oh, well, that was involved, and he was he was literally half of his body was coming out of the the deck. Did mm. you send me that? Yes, I sent you the pictures of it. It's on your messenger. Oh, I'm gonna have to look at that later. In <laughs> fact, it was practically that it was on a TikTok, and I sent you the link to it just before you sent me the link for tonight's streamyard. Oh, I haven't looked at it yet then. No, I'll have a look at that later. It was a couple of days ago. It was either yesterday or the day before I sent it. But um, with Andy's comment regards to Concord, um, with Concord, again, that is very similar because obviously it's you're traveling across timelines or time zones. Yeah. But the main thing was with Concord was that it, it actually increased in length when it went into supersonic flight. And, that's something else and it increased in length to such extent that one traveller that was commuting to New York was able to put a book in the gap that, 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 that when it opened up, nose he like looked that, at it and went, what's going on? And he put his book in it. And when the plane landed, the hole had closed up around his book and he couldn't get the book out. So he went to work, did what he had to do, got back on Concorde to fly back to the UK. And as they hit supersonic speed, the plane had stretched again, and his book fell out of the hole. Because my my late grandfather, he was one of the designers. For, I don't know which bit of Concord, but he was a designer for something to do with the head bit. And I know the head bit, when it went to supersonic mode, it went like that. And it was designed just to uh, flatten out and stretch, stretch like that, wasn't it? Yeah, well, yeah. it came up. Because yeah. the nose was up down to start off with. And then, yeah. obviously, the faster they went, they had to go up. That, the nose had to come up so that it was more streamlined and enabled it to go faster. Um, yeah. it also acts as a heat shield. Yeah. The first passenger flight was 1976, the year I was born. And you can actually go and walk through Concord if you go to IWM Duxford. You go yeah, nice I've been flight. there. Yeah, I've been there and um, I've been in that one. But there's a lots of rumours now about the, the newest ones that are, are coming about. But um, I think the latest one that hit the news, the company has um, folded. Mm. So they come out with the new concept for the new supersonic passenger jet. And as soon as they made it public, the company folded. Well, they've already got one for the hypersonic jet, haven't they? There's a... Oh, I can't remember if it's Elon Musk or not, but I know that the hypersonic jet has been invented and they're thinking about or they're in the middle of trying to get it into production aren't they because it will do was it here to new york in like three quarters of an hour or something yeah isn't that a Rich, richard branson thing? oh is it right i know it's one of them yeah um but the elon musk one is he's um preparing for a space launch to take the public up to space because that's the next step in their um tests well I reckon once these um, uh, moon bases and uh, uh, moon base Alpha, once moon bases <laughs> and, and <laughs> Martian bases are, are up there, it's going to be. It's going to be. I think in our lifetime, it'll end up being a, a run of the mill thing. Yeah, well, I've got. I own four acres of the moon, so I'm, I'm happy to be in talks with them. Yeah, I've got ten, so I'm quite happy to. Uh, yeah. 
for a fee. I'll stop wagging about your size. Um, <laughs> what was I going to say? Uh, moon, 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 moon. No, it's gone. You were talking. You were talking about you had ten and it went out of my head. No, never mind. <laughs> Something. Um, yeah, no, he still he ain't got it, has he? He's no. lost it. It was something I saw in the last couple of days, and I meant to bring it up. Mm. Well, well, if, you, if you eat dodgy food, Mark, that's your fault. Yeah, no, I had a pizza. I'm not going to bring that up. <laughs> Thank God for that. <laughs> so, what was I going to say? Um, yes. Um, in regards to when you were talking about your favourite thing, time travel. Um, mm -hmm. What do you make of that that guy who's because I put it on the uh, the wall yes, earlier today. I, I shared it, didn't I? Yeah, yeah. The guy um, who reckons he's gone forward in time. Um, as a lot of people, my mate Gary down in Somerset, and that, and amongst other people, have said, "Oh, using a camera, this, that, and the other." When you look at the thing, and he said he went into, he was in the future. Yeah, you'd think, "Why the hell are you using a camera?" He was sent from two thousand and four, so we still use cameras. That would be why. He had a take a picture of that with a Kodak. But that take a picture of me in Times Square with a Kodak. You know, yeah. um, that would explain why he had uh, Polaroid pictures. But uh, what are yours two's take on that time travel? Right. Story? So, so you're saying that he went from 2004 to the year 5000, hmm. took the picture, and then come back. Well, in, in the thing when you read it, his his thing was to go to the future. It didn't say how long he was there for. It just said he went to the future and he had to take lots of pictures and do a report on this, that, and the other. And when he came back, he showed the picture of uh, was it California or no? It was LA, wasn't it? Yeah, I, I see it, and it, it did look like an underwater city. Hmm. The water was crystal crystal clear blue, which was nice. So there might still be some nice beaches there. So I think we'd be all right. Do you know what it reminded me of? Remember, do you remember the film Waterworld with Kevin Costner? Yes. That picture yeah. looked just like the bit when you see him go under the water <laughs> with his gills and there's a bloody great big shark underneath him and he swims over the remains of a city. And that looked just like a still from that. Mm. But then he only, they only showed us that one picture. If he's taken loads, why have we not seen the others as well? There's been several reports... And I think it's the same guy um, over the last five or six years um, of him saying about all these different things that are supposed to have happened. And there are several pictures out there. I think mm. it's the same person. Um, but then, but, you know, it, it's not but, too hard to imagine because, you know, the polar ice caps are melting. So, why, yeah. you know, why can't some of it be flooded? On the, You know, just what, what we need to do is just club together and buy some property on the top of mountains and things we'd be laughing i personally want to know or extendable what stilts yeah hey? sorry extendable stilts hmm. you know lift your own house up on stilts like they do in places like bali yeah, but looking this at the photo, they're going to be quite far down. So these stilts have got to be oh, like me, you'd need massive 51 stilts. miles high. You know? <laughs> <laughs> See, this is what where the space lift gets involved. Well, we're supposed to have alien visitors, uh, is it next year? Next year. According to this guy, we're, they're supposed to be, and actually it's not just him, is it? There's a few other uh, naysayers have said that these alien visitors are going to come next year. But when you look at all the different reports that split down the middle, you've got one lot, including this uh, guy who went to the future, all say that uh, they're going to come here and they're going to they're going to cause us to spark war between them and us. Um, and then you get others saying actually the benevolent ones are going to come here and bollock us for you, you know, having all these wars and using nuclear fission. Hmm. Problem is, there's there's a guy who posts stuff on TikTok. He says he's from the year twenty thirty seven. And he's got the specific dates that we've got to look out for. And every time he posts something on TikTok, it's oh, on July the twenty seventh. This is going. To, some there is something going to happen that is going to change the world. And then you get to July the twenty seventh, and so it all happens. And you're just like, yeah, okay. So I just liked your video for no reason. Then all of a sudden, he'll pop up with another one, and it will be for five days time. And oh. you know, yeah. does it all the time. Not that, Paul. Paul Paul on the message down there, Paul Deacon. 
have you not been watching the uh, Dark Mirror radio show? If you had, you know, we've all said, aliens, I'm, I'm the alien guy. Aliens exist. They have been with us for not just centuries, but thousands and thousands and thousands and millennia of years. Um, yep. You know, and there's all this stuff with the polar ice caps melting and the um, things that have been found under the polar ice caps. We were talking about it last week when all the heads of state from all the countries around the world all met in the in Antarctica, wasn't it? Because something had been uncovered. But no one else was allowed to know. We've never known what it is. It's never made the press. Um, but slowly, things are starting to trickle out, saying that there's a whole city with advanced technology and this, that, and the other that's been uncovered. And it was supposedly flash uh, flash frozen. So See, we need to we need to put cover it back over and leave it alone. I've seen Alien V Predator. Leave it leave that shit alone. That whoa, I don't, whoa. don't need that. We don't need it. Leave it there. <laughs> the thing is 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 as well is is without the public knowing it could be like the thing. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's been frozen in ice. Leave it where it is because you don't know what's going to happen to it when it defrosts. And to be and... fair, it's not only the alien dangers that we've got. If there are alien civilizations under the ice, we don't know what they're like. Leave them no. be. They've been up in the last 1,000 years. Leave them there. But we... it could also... it's also the microbes and bacteria that yeah. Yeah. are dangerous to us as well because they've been frozen in the ice for centuries. You know, leave them be. We we don't need them. Look at the uh, uh, the screenplay to V Wars. That's all about uh, a, a germ or microbe being uncovered in the permafrost, and it, yeah. it turns people into this sort of vampiric thing. But um... see, I'm hoping for zombies because me and Kerry have been in training for zombies for like the last twelve years. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Dead. I that. No, no, it's, yeah. There's loads yeah. of wind farms around here. I'll be straight up top of one of them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We're we're all over that. <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, all it all it would take is for them to take a core sample. You know, mm. uh, a, you know, ten twenty feet down in in the polar ice cap, and they say, "Oh, we found this bacteria, and it's it's going to date back to near enough the moment when the dinosaurs were exterminated by the meteorite." Mm. Yeah, the asteroid, and it could turn out that that bacterium could be harmful to humans. It was just that the this big um, extinction event wiped that bacteria out, except for yeah. in the polar ice caps. Well, exactly. look at the what's what's the lake? There's a lake underneath Antarctica, isn't it? Of of pure pure water, um, that isn't of liquid water, isn't frozen. But they they're supposed to have found something akin to an octopus that's called specimen 37 or something like that and it's stupidly intelligent and uh well just like the octopus and the squid they didn't it didn't come from earth i, I do know the octopus don't share the same dna as anything on this planet it doesn't yeah. no. no well most most cephalopods don't do they no so explain that one they they traveled from a on an asteroid that crashed. Panspermia. Yeah, and yeah, they just grew. So maybe one day we'll just find a planet of octopus. Well, this is what I said to you, wasn't it, Mark, a few few weeks back, that, you know, it's like the dinosaurs are here and another race from another area in space has, has whacked the asteroid into Earth to restart everything and they've put the genetic material in place for our evolution to start. Well, the, the thing but with our evolution... Along with the asteroids, you get all these other bits and bobs. The, the trouble with our evolution was, it's, it's like I say, it, we, we, again, we've all spoken about it at length, as we went from being pooping in our hands and clapping to I say, old bean, have a look at my farm in the space of about 25,000 years, which in um, our... To, uh, uh, what do you want to call it? Uh, ecological terms, whatever is really quick for our DNA to go from being like that to that. It was a really, really quick space of time. And but then, then did, you... did the dinosaurs really die out? Because the closest thing we've got to dinosaurs in species is the birds with raptors. Yeah. They, they like, if you de-evolve a, a, a bird, you'll end up with a velociraptor. 
Have you ever seen my That's why they've feet? still got scaly feet. Yeah, so did they die out or did they just evolve? Well, parts of the Congo, again, we spoke about <laughs> before, parts of the Congo have reports of um, pterosaurs and something like a brontosaurus, wasn't it, being mm. seen in Central Africa uh, in this particular bit of the Congo. Yeah, so either Richard Hammond has been up, up to his old tricks, or whatever his name is, isn't it? <laughs> David Hammond, I don't know. <laughs> Geezer from Jurassic Park. <laughs> The doctor, yeah, either they're up to their old tricks or they weren't really all killed out. Yeah, mm, I think there's a lot more on this earth than meets the eye, and uh, especially with the likes of um, Skinwalker Ranch, there's a lot more doorways on this earth than meets the eye. Mm -hmm. Hello, Gary, yeah. and I think that. Uh, Skinwalker Ranch is one of those particular points on the earth where all mm. doorways and all different it's not all different paranormal stuff happens, it's the fact that all the doorways or the entrance ways to all the different dimensions and stuff just happen to be in this one place I mm. I think so. mm. I'd love to get over to there oh Christ, I can't, I, that would, but that's my oh, top of the bucket list, what about you guys? um I'd love to go. I think it's is it Pergolia Island or something? Pergolia Island in Italy, where they were at that um, mental hospital in an island. Oh, off uh, off Venice, the the one that um, oh, it, it's in Italy, Pergolia or something. It's called. Yeah, I know the one you mean. Yeah, that, I'd love to go there. Yeah. And your number oh. one's the the. Uh, it's a place we're just bloody talking about, yeah. The, um, Skinwalker Ranch. Mm. I wouldn't mind going to Skinwalker Ranch, but there's loads of other places I'd love to go to. I'd like to go to Battleship Island in Japan. Yeah, I'd like to go there as well. That's a proper place. Because, you know, I mean, I've, I've, I've seen a documentary about that place mm. and what them poor sods had to go through. Yeah. You know, just to dig up coal, miles away from any land. And they just kept building and building so that they could stop the water from getting in. They used that on um, one of the James Bond movies, wasn't it? Quantum of Solace, I think it was. Oh, yeah. yeah. That place that was built in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, yeah Quantum of Solace. Um, I'd, I'd also like to go along Route 66. That's good. That is the one where, I'm sorry, we've spoken about it before, and a TV company needs to say, you can do that. And the Dark Mirror Show has an RV and we travel from North America right down to the border with South America and we on the paranormal highway and we stop up at all the places on the way and investigate. Yeah, oh! that sounds good to me. I'm well up for that. But so all that already, that didn't like. Jack Osborne already do that, though? Bollocks to Jack Osborne. He's not us. <laughs> <laughs> he beat us yeah. to it. No, you, he's you got saw that now, Mark. Mark. He's not slightly there, American. No, he's not us. Needs all yeah. of us to do that. Yeah, you sort him, Mark. I'll be up for that. What I tell you what, if, I tell you what. In, in all seriousness, if a TV ever company turned around and said, "You know, that's a really good idea," you'd be up for it. I'd be like, "Yes, now, <laughs> just sign me up." Yeah, when do we leave? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly, you guys would be up for that. All three of us presenting, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. and we investigate all these different places all the way down. Yeah, that's it. Roswell. Yep. I'm all over that. <laughs> Definitely, Mr. and Carl, trying to get access to Area 51. Yeah, okay. Area 51. No, you can't get access to that because it don't exist. But <laughs> it would be nice to go to. Was it Little, little Alien? It'd alien, nice yeah. yeah. Life on the Little Alien. We go in there for a little milkshake in the Little Alien. <laughs> I believe Carl Hutchinson's been there, hasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, <laughs> It was Carl who um, at first mentioned about us all doing this show. Yeah. So, uh, you know, any, any of the TV companies out there, that's the show going from North to South America, down the Har Par Paranormal Highway, with nobody else apart from us, and maybe Carl yeah. and Kerry Greenaway, doing the drive and doing all the investigations. And we filmed that. That would be really good. Everything. Yeah. That'd be fantastic. And then we could do different. We. Yeah, you know, we, I'm sure we could do other routes as well around them. Like, 
Well, well you could do an east to west. Will be the paranormal yeah. highway. The first series will be that. Yeah. And yeah, then after that, good. once we've got popular, the yeah. haunted RV. <laughs> yeah. Haunted. Oh, that would be amazing. That oh, God, the mystery machine. <laughs> no, nah, copy written that one. You can't do that. <laughs> well, I don't know. Shaggy was at the uh, last investigation. We did one. He of was. Yeah, Shaggy was there. Yeah. Yeah, we we actually we could for the horn. We could have the Scooby Doo thing, June. <laughs> mm. Could you that. imagine that? Someone. Someone Jay walks out in front of me and Or the Monsters. You do the Monsters theme tune, that'd do it. That'd be all right for home. <laughs> How many years have we said about doing that show? Oh yeah, I remember years and years. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's still there. T V companies take note. Yeah, yeah, that's it. It's all good. Him. him. Me, be a blast. It would, and on that put, uh, note, I've noticed that our time is up. <coughs> so uh, quick, it? it has too quick. Would you like to come back again? Oh, absolutely. I haven't been too embarrassing tonight. No, no, not not embarrassing enough. So I'd have to come back, and challenge you a bit more. All right then. Well, next time, um, different T-shirt, not one that shows off the nipple clamps because we can just see one of them peeking through. But uh, oh, right, okay. Yeah, right. no worries. So, put, uh, <laughs> have you got anything else you'd like to add there, Wayne, or, or talk about or anything? No, not really. Okay, dokie. Well, in that case, um, thank you very much for joining us. Remember, we need to do that TV show, Dark Mirror uh, radio show on the road. Dark Mirror concept show. All right, I'll compromise with that. Yeah. yeah. The Dark okay. Mirror concept road show. <laughs> That's it, yeah. <laughs> Dark Mirror Concept Road Trip. There you go. Yeah, perfect. Oh, oh do you want to make perfect. it any longer? <laughs> <laughs> That'd still be an awesome show. It, it would beat Clarkson and everybody. It, it would be the DMC Road Show. <laughs> That'll do. That'll do. People go, what the hell's this crap? Put it on and go. Yeah. Wearing in a British accent. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> well, yeah. Thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you, no everybody problem. in the chat room, for joining us and watching us. And thank you, everybody on YouTube. And uh, we're either going to have a guest next week or we're going to talk about some uh, something completely out there and wacky like we normally do. So uh, I would like to say thank you very much to Mr. Paul Rook for joining us. No and problem. Mr. Wayne Sedden, as oh, usual. Yeah. yeah, Mr. Wayne Sedden, as usual, uh, putting up with our inane drivel that we talk about. And uh, we will see you all next week. And uh, I will see you on the 14th, Paul, for that investigation. Yep, definitely. Looking forward to it. Uh, have you got anything coming up, Wayne, before we go? No? Not at all? Are you I'm Billy No, right? mate. No, we were supposed to... Um, I was originally going to be doing Gainsborough on the 14th, but it looks like Gainsborough is going to be shut down. Oh. Um. They've had some problems with the locals at the Old Nick Theatre. Um, and the locals have complained and they've told all paranormal groups they've got to be finished by midnight. Uh, and I'll be so bugging if I'm driving. Sorry? Things don't start normally happening till midnight or after. Yeah, I know. But one of the when I was there last time with um, the Ghouls Allowed group. Um, people yeah. have parked up out the front and one of yeah. the neighbours was teased off because they'd parked yeah. in his space, which wasn't his space yeah. anyway. Um, and I'd gone out there and managed to calm the guy down and said to him, you know, all you had to do was be polite to people and ask to move the cars yeah. further down and people would have obliged. Yeah. Um, but he didn't, so it looks like I'm going to be Billy No Mates for a little while. Before you go... Mr. Andy Grasham has come up with the best name for our uh, paranormal show uh, on the uh, paranormal uh, highway. Pol Polter guys, yeah. Polter yeah. guys. <laughs> Love it. On that note, Tatty Bye. Thank you for that, mate. We will see you all soon. No, I'm straight, but thank you for asking. See you later, Wade. See ya.